A bearing is a machine element that constrains relative motion and reduces friction between moving parts to only the desired motion. The design of the bearing may, for example, provide for free linear movement of the moving part or for free rotation around a fixed axis. Or, it may prevent a motion by controlling the vectors of normal forces that bear on the moving parts. Many bearings also facilitate the desired motion as much as possible, such as by minimizing friction. Bearings are classified broadly according to the type of operation, the motions allowed, or to the directions of the loads applied to the parts. The term bearing is derived from the verb to bear. A bearing being a machine element that allows one part to bear another. The simplest bearings are bearing surfaces, cut or formed into a part, with varying degrees of control over the form, size, roughness and location of the surface. Other bearings are separate devices installed into a machine or machine part. The most sophisticated bearings for the most demanding applications are very precise devices. Their manufacture requires some of the highest standards of current technology. History The invention of the rolling bearing, in the form of wooden rollers supporting, or bearing, an object being moved is of great antiquity, and may predate the invention of the wheel. Though it is often claimed that the Egyptians used roller bearings in the form of tree trunks under sleds, this is modern speculation. They are depicted in their own drawings in the tomb of Chushihut as moving massive stone blocks on sledges with the runners lubricated with a liquid which would constitute a plain bearing. There are also Egyptian drawings of bearings used with hand drills. The earliest recovered example of a rolling element bearing is a wooden ball bearing supporting a rotating table from the remains of the Roman Nemi ships in Lake Nemi, Italy. The wrecks were dated to 40 BC. Leonardo da Vinci incorporated drawings of ball bearings in his design for a helicopter around the year 1500. This is the first recorded use of bearings in an aerospace design. However, Agostino Romelli is the first to have published sketches of roller and thrust bearings. An issue with ball and roller bearings is that the balls or rollers rub against each other causing additional friction which can be prevented by enclosing the balls or rollers in a cage. The captured, or caged, ball bearing was originally described by Galileo in the 17th century. The first practical caged roller bearing was invented in the mid-1740s by horologist John Harrison for his H3 marine timekeeper. This uses the bearing for a very limited oscillating motion but Harrison also used a similar bearing in a truly rotary application in a contemporaneous regulator clock. Industrial era, the first modern recorded patent on ball bearings was awarded to Philip Vaughan, a British inventor and ironmaster who created the first design for a ball bearing in Carmarthen in 1794. His was the first modern ball bearing design, with the ball running along a groove in the axle assembly. Bearings played a pivotal role in the nascent industrial revolution, allowing the new industrial machinery to operate efficiently. For example, they saw use for holding wheel and axle to greatly reduce friction over that of dragging an object by making the friction act over a shorter distance as the wheel turned. The first plane and rolling element bearings were wood closely followed by bronze. Over their history bearings have been made of many materials including ceramic, sapphire, glass, steel, bronze, other metals and plastic which are all used today. Watchmakers produce jeweled watches using sapphire plane bearings to reduce friction thus allowing more precise timekeeping. Even basic materials can have good durability. As examples, wooden bearings can still be seen today in old clocks or in water mills where the water provides cooling and lubrication. The first patent for a radial style ball bearing was awarded to Jules Serere, a Parisian bicycle mechanic, on August 3, 1869. The bearings were then fitted to the winning bicycle ridden by James Moore in the world's first bicycle road race, Paris-Rouen, in November 1869. In 1883, Friedrich Fischer, founder of FAG, developed an approach for milling and grinding balls of equal size and exact roundness by means of a suitable production machine and formed the foundation for creation of an independent bearing industry. The modern, Self aligning design of ball bearing is attributed to Sven Wingrist of the SKF ball bearing manufacturer in 1907, when he was awarded Swedish patent number 25406 on its design. Henry Timken, 
a 19th-century visionary and innovator in carriage manufacturing, patented the tapered roller bearing in 1898. The following year he formed a company to produce his innovation. Over a century the company grew to make bearings of all types, including speciality steel and an array of related products and services. Eric Frank invented and patented the wire race bearing in 1934. His focus was on a bearing design with a cross-section as small as possible and which could be integrated into the enclosing design. After World War II he founded together with Gerard Heydrich the company Frank and Heydrich KG to push the development and production of wire race bearings. Richard Strebeck a Euro unregistered trademark s extensive research on ball bearing steels identified the metallurgy of the commonly used 100 CR6 showing coefficient of friction as a function of pressure. Designed in 1968 and later patented in 1972, Bishop Wisecarver's co-founder Bud Wisecarver created V-Groove Bearing Guide Wheels, a type of linear motion bearing consisting of both an external and internal 90-degree V-angle. In the early 1980s, Pacific Bearings founder, Robert Schroeder, invented the first B-material plane bearing which was size interchangeable with linear ball bearings. This bearing had a metal shell and a layer of Teflon-based material connected by a thin adhesive layer. Today ball and roller bearings are used in many applications which include a rotating component. Examples include ultra-high speed bearings in dental drills, aerospace bearings in the Mars rover, gearbox and wheel bearings on automobiles, flexure bearings in optical alignment systems and bicycle wheel hubs. Common, by far, the most common bearing is the plane bearing, a bearing which uses surfaces in rubbing contact often with a lubricant such as oil or graphite. A plain bearing may or may not be a discrete device. It may be nothing more than the bearing surface of a hole with a shaft passing through it, or of a planar surface that bears another. Or it may be a layer of bearing metal either fused to the substrate or in the form of a separable sleeve. With suitable lubrication, plain bearings often give entirely acceptable accuracy, life, and friction at minimal cost. Therefore, they are very widely used. However, there are many applications where a more suitable bearing can improve efficiency, accuracy, service intervals, reliability, speed of operation, size, weight, and costs of purchasing and operating machinery. Thus, there are many types of bearings, with varying shape, material, lubrication, principle of operation, and so on. Principles of operation there are at least six common principles of operation, plane bearing, also known by the specific styles, bushing, journal bearing, sleeve bearing, rifle bearing, rolling element bearing such as ball bearings and roller bearings, jewel bearing, in which the load is carried by rolling the axle slightly off center, fluid bearing, in which the load is carried by a gas or liquid, magnetic bearing, in which the load is carried by a magnetic field, flexure bearing, in which the motion is supported by a load element which bends. Motions, common motions permitted by bearings are, axial rotation for example shaft rotation, linear motion for example draw, spherical rotation for example ball and socket joint, hinge motion for example door, elbow, knee, friction, reducing friction in bearings is often important for efficiency to reduce wear and to facilitate extended use at high speeds and to avoid overheating and premature failure of the bearing. Essentially, a bearing can reduce friction by virtue of its shape, by its material, or by introducing and containing a fluid between surfaces or by separating the surfaces with an electromagnetic field. By shape, gains advantage usually by using spheres or rollers, or by forming flexure bearings. By material, exploits the nature of the bearing material used. By fluid, exploits the low viscosity of a layer of fluid, such as a lubricant or as a pressurized medium to keep the two solid parts from touching, or by reducing the normal force between them. By fields, exploits electromagnetic fields, such as magnetic fields, to keep solid parts from touching. Combinations of these can even be employed within the same bearing. An example of this is where the cage is made of plastic, and it separates the roller's balls, which reduce friction by their shape and finish. Loads, 
bearings vary greatly over the size and directions of forces that they can support. Forces can be predominantly radial, axial or bending moments perpendicular to the main axis. Speeds, different bearing types of different operating speed limits. Speed is typically specified as maximum relative surface speeds, often specified foot per second or ms. Rotational bearings typically describe performance in terms of the product dn where d is the mean diameter of the bearing and n is the rotation rate in revolutions per minute. Generally there is considerable speed range overlap between bearing types. Plane bearings typically handle only lower speeds, rolling element bearings are faster, followed by fluid bearings and finally magnetic bearings which are limited ultimately by centripetal force overcoming material strength. Play some applications apply bearing loads from varying directions and accept only limited play or slop as the applied load changes. One source of motion is gaps or play in the bearing. For example, a 10 ohm shaft in a 12 ohm hole has 2 ohm play. Allowable play varies greatly depending on the use. As example, a wheelbarrow wheel supports radial and axial loads. Axial loads may be hundreds of newtons force left or right and it is typically acceptable for the wheel to wobble by as much as 10 ohm under the varying load. In contrast, a lathe may position a cutting tool to a plus or minus 0.02 ohm using a ball lead screw held by rotating bearings. The bearings support axial loads of thousands of newtons in either direction, and must hold the ball lead screw to a plus or minus 0.002 ohm across that range of loads, stiffness, a second source of motion is elasticity in the bearing itself. For example, the balls in a ball bearing are like stiff rubber, and under load deform from round to a slightly flattened shape. The race is also elastic and develops a slight dent where the ball presses on it. The stiffness of a bearing is how the distance between the parts which are separated by the bearing varies with applied load. With rolling element bearings this is due to the strain of the ball and race. With fluid bearings it is due to how the pressure of the fluid varies with the gap. Suffixes for bearings common for all types SKF FAG, C1 radial clearance less than C2, C2 radial clearance less than C3, C3 radial clearance more than normal, C4 radial clearance more than C3, C5 radial clearance more than C4, K taper ball, taper of 112, K30 taper ball, taper of 130. Self-aligning ball bearings SKF FAG TN9 TV molded polyamide cage, rolling element riding. MM machine brass cage, rolling element riding 2 or S1.2 or S a rubber seal at both ends. Deep groove ball bearings single row SKF FAG, RS1 or S a rubber seal at one end. 2 or S1.2 or S a rubber seal at both ends. ZZ a metallic dust shield at one end. ZZ.2Z are metallic dust shield at both ends. MM machine brass cage, rolling element riding MAMA machine brass cage, outer ring riding TNTB machine textile laminated phenolic cage, inner ring riding. ZZ are metallic dust shield at one end. RS1 RS a rubber seal at one end. 2Z.2Z are metallic dust shield at both ends. 2 RS 1.2 RS a rubber seal at both ends. TNHTVH molded polyamide cage, snap type cage, rolling element riding. NAP 63 bearing with tolerance class of P6 and radial clearance of C3. Single row self aligning spherical roller bearing SKF FAG, NAT molded polyamide cage, window type cage, rolling element riding. NA megabyte machine brass cage. Inner ring riding. EE1 maximum capacity design NATV PB molded polyamide cage, PA66 GF25, window type cage, inner ring riding. Double row self aligning spherical roller bearing SKF FAG, EE1 maximum capacity design NA megabyte machine brass cage, inner ring riding. NAB modified internal design VA405T41A special suffix for vibrating machines application with narrow tolerances for bore and diameter, with C4 clearance. NAA modified internal design MAMA machine brass cage, outer ring riding MM machine brass cage, rolling element riding NATVPB molded polyamide cage, 
PA66 GF25, window type cage, inner ring riding. W33S groove on outer ring with three lubricating holes at 120 degree. NAT52 BWP5 running accuracy for outer ring and inner ring, point of max radial rune out marked on inner ring and outer ring. Spherical roller thrust bearing SKF bag, EE extended life design. MMB machine brass cage, inner ring riding. Taper roller bearing SKF bag, NAC Z case hardened for OD less than 90 mm, interchangeable with ANAC Y through hardened for OD less than 90 mm, interchangeable with AJ2A modified internal design NAA 100.140 predetermined axial clearance of 100 to 140 micron NAN 11 CA2 TRB matched in X arrangement with spacer in between. XX boundary dimension adapted to international standards. Double row angular contact ball bearing SKF FAG NAB modified internal design TN9 TVH molded polyamide cage, snap type, rolling element riding. 2RS 1.2RS a rubber seal at both ends. 2Z.2Z a metallic dust shield at both ends. DMA DAR split inner ring NAMA machine brass cage, outer ring riding NAM machine brass cage. Rolling element riding angular contact ball bearings SKF FAG MMP machine brass cage, window type, rolling element riding. BECB, BCB UA universal design for paired mounting, with O and X arrangement, small axial clearance. BB contact angle of 40 degree Celsius C contact angle of 15 degree. EE contact angle of 25 degree. PTVP molded polyamide cage, window type cage, rolling element riding. NAUO universal design for paired mounting, with O and X arrangement the bearing pair has zero clearance. NAP5 tolerance class of P5. JJP pressed steel cage. Default in BECB, BCB P6 tolerance class of P6UL universal design for paired mounting, with O and X arrangement the bearing pair is slightly preloaded. Cylindrical roller bearing SKF FAG, ECE extended life design PTVP2 molded polyamide cage, window type, rolling element riding. MM1 machine brass cage, cross piece riveted, rolling element riding. VB full complement bearing. MM1 machine brass cage, cross piece riveted, outer ring riding. Massachusetts, M1A, machine brass cage, window type, outer ring riding. X extended life design, modified internal design. Four point bearings SKF FAG MMPA machined window type brass cage design, outer ring riding N2 N2 2 locating grooves. TNTVP molded polyamide cage, window type cage, rolling element riding. Chart indicative for basic information for authentication please consult manufacturers. Service life, fluid and magnetic bearings. Fluid and magnetic bearings can have practically indefinite service lives. In practice, there are fluid bearings supporting high loads in hydroelectric plants that have been in nearly continuous service since about 1900 and which show no signs of wear. Rolling element bearings Rolling element bearing life is determined by load, temperature, maintenance, lubrication, material defects, contamination, handling, installation and other factors. These factors can all have a significant effect on bearing life. For example, the service life of bearings in one application was extended dramatically by changing how the bearings were stored before installation and use as vibrations during storage cause lubricant failure even when the only load on the bearing was its own weight. The resulting damage is often false brinoling. Bearing life is statistical, several samples of a given bearing will often exhibit a bell curve of service life, with a few samples showing significantly better or worse life. Bearing life varies because microscopic structure and contamination vary greatly even where macroscopically they seem identical. L10 life Bearings are often specified to give an L10 life this is the life at which 10% of the bearings in that application can be expected to have failed due to classical fatigue failure, or, alternatively, the life at which 90% will still be operating. 
the L10 life of the bearing is theoretical life and may not represent service life of the bearing. Bearings are also rated using CO value. This is the basic load rating as a reference, and not an actual load value. Plain bearings, for plain bearings some materials give much longer life than others. Some of the John Harrison clocks still operate after hundreds of years because of the lignum vitae wood employed in their construction, whereas his metal clocks are seldom run due to potential wear. Flexure bearings, flexure bearings rely on elastic properties of material. Flexure bearings bend a piece of material repeatedly. Some materials fail after repeated bending, even at low loads, but careful material selection and bearing design can make flexure bearing life indefinite. Short life bearings, although long bearing life is often desirable, it is sometimes not necessary. Tedrick K. Harris describes a bearing for a rocket motor oxygen pump that gave several hours life, far in excess of the several tens of minutes life needed. External factors, the service life of the bearing is affected by many parameters that are not controlled by the bearing manufacturers. For example, bearing mounting, temperature, exposure to external environment, lubricant cleanliness and electrical currents through bearings etc. Maintenance and lubrication, many bearings require periodic maintenance to prevent premature failure, but many others require little maintenance. The latter include various kinds of fluid and magnetic bearings, as well as rolling element bearings that are described with terms including sealed bearing and sealed for life. These contain seals to keep the dirt out and the grease in. They work successfully in many applications, providing maintenance-free operation. Some applications cannot use them effectively. Non-sealed bearings often have a grease fitting, for periodic lubrication with a grease gun, or an oil cap for periodic filling with oil. Before the 1970s, sealed bearings were not encountered on most machinery, and oiling and greasing were a more common activity than they are today. For example, Automotive chassis used to require lube jobs nearly as often as engine oil changes, but today's car chassis are mostly sealed for life. From the late 1700s through mid-1900s, industry relied on many workers called oilers to lubricate machinery frequently with oil cans. Factory machines today usually have lube systems, in which a central pump serves periodic charges of oil or grease from a reservoir through lube lines to the various lube points in the machine's bearing surfaces, bearing journals, pillow blocks, and so on. The timing and number of such lube cycles is controlled by the machine's computerized control, such as PLC or CNC, as well as by manual override functions when occasionally needed. This automated process is how all modern CNC machine tools and many other modern factory machines are lubricated. Similar lube systems are also used on non-automated machines, in which case there is a hand pump that a machine operator is supposed to pump once daily or once weekly. These are called one-shot systems from their chief selling point, one pull on one handle to lube the whole machine instead of a dozen pumps of an alemite gun or oil can in a dozen different positions around the machine. The oiling system inside a modern automotive or truck engine is similar in concept to the lube systems mentioned above, except that oil is pumped continuously. Much of this oil flows through passages drilled or cast into the engine block and cylinder heads, escaping through ports directly onto bearings, and squirting elsewhere to provide an oil bath. The oil pump simply pumps constantly, and any excess pumped oil continuously escapes through a relief valve back into the sump. Many bearings in high-cycle industrial operations need periodic lubrication and cleaning, and many require occasional adjustment, such as preload adjustment, to minimize the effects of wear. Bearing life is often much better when the bearing is kept clean and well lubricated. However, many applications make good maintenance difficult. For example, bearings in the conveyor of a rock crusher are exposed continually to hard abrasive particles. Cleaning is of little use, because cleaning is expensive yet the bearing is contaminated again as soon as the conveyor resumes operation. Thus, a good maintenance program might lubricate the bearings frequently but not include any disassembly for cleaning. The frequent lubrication, by its nature, provides a limited kind of cleaning action by displacing older oil or grease with a fresh charge, 
which itself collects grit before being displaced by the next cycle. Rolling element bearing outer race fault detection, the rolling element bearing is widely used in the industries today and hence maintenance of these bearings becomes an important task for the maintenance professionals. The rolling element bearings wear out easily due to metal-to-metal -metal contact which creates faults in the outer race, inner race and ball. It is also however the most vulnerable component of a machine because it is often under high load and high running speed conditions. Regular diagnostics of rolling element bearing faults is critical for industrial safety and operations of the machines along with reducing the maintenance costs or avoiding shutdown time. Among the outer race, inner race and ball, the outer race tends to be more vulnerable to faults and defects. There is still a room for discussion if the rolling element excites the natural frequencies of bearing component when it passes the fault on the outer race. Hence we need to identify the bearing outer race natural frequency and its harmonics. The bearing faults create impulses and results in strong harmonics of the fault frequencies in the spectrum of vibration signals. These fault frequencies are sometimes masked by adjacent frequencies in the spectra due to their little energy. Hence, a very high spectral resolution is often needed to identify these frequencies during FFT analysis. The natural frequencies of a rolling element bearing with the free boundary conditions are 3 a kilohertz. Therefore, in order to use the bearing component resonance bandwidth method to detect the bearing fault at an initial stage a high frequency range accelerometer should be adopted and data obtained from a long duration needs to be acquired. A fault characteristic frequency can only be identified when the fault extent is severe, such as that of a presence of a hole in the outer race. The harmonics of fault frequency is a more sensitive indicator of a bearing outer race fault. For a more serious detection of defected bearing faults waveform, spectrum and envelope techniques will help reveal these faults. However, if a high frequency demodulation is used in the envelope analysis in order to detect bearing fault characteristic frequencies the maintenance professionals have to be more careful in the analysis because of resonance, as it may or may not contain fault frequency components. Using spectral analysis as a tool to identify the faults in the bearings face challenges due to issues like low energy, signal smearing, cyclostationarity etc. High resolution is often desired to differentiate the fault frequency components from the other high amplitude adjacent frequencies. Hence, when the signal is sampled for FFT analysis, the sample length should be large enough to give adequate frequency resolution in the spectrum. Also, keeping the computation time and memory within limits and avoiding unwanted aliasing may be demanding. However, a minimum frequency resolution required can be obtained by estimating the bearing fault frequencies and other vibration frequency components and its harmonics due to shaft speed, misalignment, line frequency, gearbox etc. Packing Some bearings use a thick grease for lubrication, which is pushed into the gaps between the bearing surfaces, also known as packing. The grease is held in place by a plastic, leather, or rubber gasket that covers the inside and outside edges of the bearing race to keep the grease from escaping. Bearings may also be packed with other materials. Historically, the wheels on railroad cars used sleeve bearings packed with waste or loose scraps cotton or wool fiber soaked in oil, then later used solid pads of cotton. Ring oiler. Bearings can be lubricated by a metal ring that rides loosely on the central rotating shaft of the bearing. The ring hangs down into a chamber containing lubricating oil. As the bearing rotates, viscous adhesion draws oil up the ring and onto the shaft, where the oil migrates into the bearing to lubricate it. Excess oil is flung off and collects in the pool again. Splash lubrication Some machines contain a pool of lubricant in the bottom, with gears partially immersed in the liquid, or crank rods that can swing down into the pool as the device operates. The spinning wheels fling oil into the air around them, while the crank rods slap at the surface of the oil, splashing it randomly on the interior surfaces of the engine. Some small internal combustion engines specifically contain special plastic flinger wheels which randomly scatter oil around the interior of the mechanism. Pressure lubrication For high speed and high power machines, a loss of lubricant can result in rapid bearing heating and damage due to friction. 
Also in dirty environments the oil can become contaminated with dust or debris that increases friction. In these applications, a fresh supply of lubricant can be continuously supplied to the bearing and all other contact surfaces, and the excess can be collected for filtration, cooling, and possibly reuse. Pressure oiling is commonly used in large and complex internal combustion engines in parts of the engine where directly splashed oil cannot reach, such as up into overhead valve assemblies. High-speed turbochargers also typically require a pressurized oil system to cool the bearings and keep them from burning up due to the heat from the turbine. Types There are many different types of bearings. Knife-edge bearings, see also. References External links Comprehensive Review on Bearings, University of Cambridge, How Bearings Work, Bearing Lubricants, Early Bearing Failure Detection, How to Measure a Bearing, Choosing the Correct Bearing Type, Kinematic Models for Design Digital Library, Movies and Photos of Hundreds of Working Mechanical Systems Models at Cornell University. Also includes an e-book library of classic texts on mechanical design and engineering. Types of Bearings, Cambridge University. Some observations of the detection of rolling element bearing out a race fault, the effect of frequency resolution and bearing fault studies, diagnosis of rolling element bearing faults using envelope analysis.